guys hey guys welcome to the channel and welcome back to another video on today's video saturday we are live and we're talking about the things the philosophies that make this channel different than most other money youtube channels now if you're here from another place not on youtube uh, that's cool. You can come on over to YouTube, guys. Let me know that you can hear me okay. Give me a thumbs up. Looks like we've got a lot of folks in the in the uh, description or in the, in the chat already. That's, that's great. Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful. So how you doing, Curtis? Good to have you. He's Curtis is coming out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Guys, let me know what city you're from and let me know that you can hear me here on YouTube or if you're watching from somewhere else, guys. We're just going to have a conversation about what makes this YouTube money channel different than all the rest. Okay, what makes this channel different than the uniqueness of this channel? Other than me being the person here, there's other things that we think about that make this channel unique on YouTube. Smart money bro on YouTube. Why? What's the big deal? This is just like all types of money gurus out there. I get it. I understand it. We're going to go through it and talk about it on this video. I see some of you guys are checking in from Facebook. Some of you checking in from uh, LinkedIn. Some are checking in from uh, X Twitter, there's folks all over the place, and that's cool. If you're not on YouTube, feel free to come over on YouTube, but that's where we're at. But we're also here in a lot of different places. So when you're entering into the chat room, guys, let me know what city you're in and let me know what state you're in or what country you're in or even what continent that you're on. And give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you can actually hear me. All right. Looks like we got a few. Hey, uh, New Jersey's in the house. Good to have you here from New Jersey. Uh, Sunset, Grayman, Michael Bell, good to have you. San Antonio, Texas in here. Cammy or Kimmy, good to have you as always. Sunset on the Ocean from the ATL is here. Dallas, Fort Worth is here. Uh, John, good morning to you. Ricky, good morning to you from San Francisco. We got Harlington, Texas. We got Hawaii checking in here. We got Boynton Beach, Florida checking in. Uh, we got uh, Raymore, Missouri checking in. We got uh, lunchtime in Tampa. We got we got Jacksonville. And somebody said Ab Abu Dhabi. Is that Abu Dhabi? New York is here. St. Petersburg, Florida, L.A. We got folks from all over the country and all over the world. It looks like we have a few folks from outside of the United States. So we're here, guys. I just want to explain to you and have this conversation about what is different about this YouTube channel. Right. Yes. Your person, my personality or who I am is unique. And oftentimes that makes us different. But the approach to finances, the approach to money is a little bit different, you know, as well, right? Money is a very saturated, I say saturated, there's a lot of folks talking about money on YouTube, a lot of folks talking about personal finances on YouTube, right? But, you know, how do you differentiate yourself? So I was going to do this video today about how to actually build a YouTube channel. Like what types of things you could use and need and what type of what, what things you got to do in terms of editing, in terms of video as a side hustle. Right. Because YouTube is a great side hustle. And I may do that, that uh, that talk next week. But today I want to focus on separating yourself from the pack. Right. Separating. If you talk about shoes, there's a lot of people that talk about shoes. What are, What's different about you talking about shoes? In terms of this YouTube channel, what's different about me talking about money, right? And I'm going to explain really some approaches that I use that are different. Detroit, Michigan's in the house. Another Hawaii. East St. Louis, East Boogie is in the house. Jerseyville is here. we got a lot of folks all over the world. Oh, Abidaba is in UAE. Frederick, good to have you all the way from the UAE. Uh, let's see here. So, if you guys rock with me or you have been rocking with me, you sort of understand uh, kind of my philosophy. And some of you do, some of you don't, some of you are new. If you're new here, haven't listened to me, guys, feel free to become a subscriber here on YouTube. Feel free to also smash the like button for me, right? I always say smash the like button because that gives the indication to the algorithm that this is a video worth checking out. And that's always a good thing, right? But as we get, okay, hi, hey, Robert is here from New York City. Good to have you, Robert. And Corvette Girl from Long Island, New York. Good to have you here. I'm going to give you 14 core values of this YouTube channel that make it different than some of the other channels that you've probably listened to or some of the other uh, YouTubers that you've listened to, right? 
the part of my story is that I went from a negative $30,000 net worth at the age of 30, broke, no money, poor background, you know, came up poor. And I'm not using that as a badge of honor. I'm just using it to explain the story. Come up poor, very poor, right? You named the social program. I was on it, right? My mom actually became a nurse when I was in my teens, a RN. She was a, a LPN for many years. She went back. She got her, uh, her uh, what do you call it, uh, GED. She got her associate's degree, and she became an RN when I was in my teens, and things kind of changed from there. But we were still poor. We just weren't as poor, right? Where, you know, I was the youngest of five where she raised five children. Uh, my parents raised five children until my father and my mother got divorced. And then my mother continued to raise, but she went back to school and we were just poor, right? Projects, you name it, food stamps, whatever it was. And then things got better. And then even up to the time I was 30 years old, I was a college graduate. I still had a negative net worth to my name at 30 years old. So I was poor for 30 years, guys, even though I had a college degree. I got that at 24. I was still poor. Now, over the last 20 years, I've done some things to build my net worth. And part of my 14 core values I'm going to give you on this video is what it took to dig out of that hole, to go from poor, to stay in the middle class for a while and move to another level of wealth, which is where I'm at now. Right. So I've been on all that's one thing. And that's this is not even part of the 14. But since we're jumping right into it, that's one thing that separates uh, me a little bit is that I've been in all these classes. Right. I've been I've spent a lot of time, 30 years in, the, in as a poor person and maybe 10, 15 years in the middle class. And now we're talking we're starting to see some actual wealth. And it's a different way of looking at things. But I had to do some things different. I had to think different. I had to have some different behaviors to move right? Have to had to have a different perspective and a different way of thinking to move. And these 14 core values I'm going to share with you guys are just things that have helped propel that change in terms of my status, in terms of wealth, poverty, middle-class wealth. So I want to share that with you guys today. And hopefully, you know, this will be able to give you a good idea if, hey, this is a guy that I want to listen to when it comes to money, or this is a guy I don't want to listen to when it comes to money. You may listen to this live broadcast and say, you know what? I'm done with this dude. I don't like this dude. I don't like nothing he's talking about. I'm not, boom, boom. You, that's cool, right? That's cool if you do that. I'm okay with that, right? And you'll see when, a, when I get to talking about these core values, these are really, really important things to me and they matter. They've made, they've made a big, big difference in my life. We got somebody from Pennsylvania, Nick, we got Lancaster, Pennsylvania checking in. The Philly suburbs. Man, Pennsylvania is well represented in this chat today. George is in the house. Jay Samuels, good to have you as always, man. Uh, Frederick, Florida. Okay, let's see. Let's get it going. Let's get it going, Curtis. Let's jump it off. Guys, again, check out the description box below in YouTube. You'll see some things in there. I got my, my partner in crime that usually comes on here with me. Mint Mobile is down there, and I use them. Very good uh, premium wireless service. Check that out. There's some free stuff down in the description box, but I don't want to bother you too much with that. Let's get it rolling. Number one, the first core value that makes this YouTube channel different is I like I, I like to talk to, and, and I think my audience is mostly experienced people. My audience is not the 16, the 18, the 20, the 22, the 24. Although, if you're 22, 24, this is some excellent information that I drop on this channel. Excellent information. But if you're, but typically my primary targeted audience is the 35 year old, the 40 year old, the 45 year old, the people that have made some mistakes, right? Because this, this, this money talk that we talk about on this channel is really, really straightforward. And it's designed to help people who have made some mistakes. Now, listen, if you haven't made mistakes and you're 21, 22 years old, you need to watch this channel so you can know what not to do, right? And know what ways to think and ways to uh, feel about or perspectives to have with money that's going to make you avoid mistakes. But typically, I have a lot of videos in on here that talk to the over 40 crowd or the over 30 crowd, right? Because a lot of what we see sometimes on YouTube doesn't really address that demographic. The much more mature person who might be 50 years old, made a bunch of mistakes and want to get better with money, even though they're a little older. Right. So I have a lot of videos on here that speak to the more mature crowd when it comes to money. And that's OK. It doesn't exclude the 20 year old because I want the 20 year old to watch the video. 
because that way they'll learn. But I don't, but, but my primary audience, if I look at my statistics, I could pull it up on here and show you guys. My statistics primarily point to the 35 to 55 year old crowd, the 30 year old to the 60 year old crowd. That's my demographic. That's the people I talk to. Again, we're straightforward. We're not talking about uh, fast money on this channel. That's what we, that's not what we do. So part of my core values is to reach that person. Part of my mission is to reach that person who has made some mistakes with money because I've made mistakes with money. And how do you recover? How do you move forward? How do you handle your money looking in the windshield as opposed to the rearview mirror, right? That's what it's all about. And that's part of, that's one thing that sort of separates this channel on YouTube from other channels. If you're not on YouTube, feel free to go to Smart Money Bro on YouTube and check us out. Become a subscriber. Number two, I'm going to go through these guys and hang in there with me. And by the way, if you have a question, drop, drop a cue in the chat. I'll get to a few questions here and there as well. Number two is this. I have nothing to sell you. Okay. I'm not, my goal is not to sell you a course. My goal is not to sell you anything. This makes this YouTube channel a little bit different. I try to be as genuine, honest, upfront, and tell the truth without sugarcoating things. We get enough sugarcoating in America right? We get enough sugarcoating. We get enough people telling you what you want to hear. We get enough people trying to make you feel extra special and wonderful and good all the time. That's not my goal. My goal is to shake you to so that you can understand that this is something that you need to do different. We don't, we don't try to fake the funk, right? We, we don't try to, I don't try to be something that I'm not on this channel. I make money on YouTube. Yes. I do because I get uh, because I'm monetized on YouTube. I, I I spent a year and a half on YouTube making close to 300 videos that I didn't make any money from YouTube. But I do make money on YouTube, right? But I'm not trying to feed a family on YouTube. I'm not trying to feed a family with selling you a $900 course. I don't have to do that. I don't want to do that. That's not that's not the goal, right? I'm just being honest with you and being real with you. My goal is to help you. Now, if you sell a course or you know people to sell courses, I'm not bashing them, right? I don't, I don't like to bash. I don't, one thing I don't do with this, doing this channel is I do not bash other people who try to give out financial advice. That's not the purpose, okay? I don't want to do that. That's not cool to me. I don't want to use my platform to pull anybody else down. That's not what I want to do, Right. My platform is to lift you up, make you think different, make you act different and behave different with money, right? So listen, I do one-on-one financial mentoring and coaching, and you have to pay for that, right? That's a charge. And I mention it from time to time on my channel because I want to make sure that you guys understand it's available. But I don't need, I don't, I don't, I don't push that down your throat because it's not, a, it's not, something that I need to feed myself, right? I have a full-time job, and this is why you don't see me at noon on a Tuesday, because at noon on a Tuesday, I'm working, right? I have a job that I have to focus on, which I focus on, right? But the point is, is that with this number two, is that I am not trying to sell you necessarily anything, although I do have services that do cost money. That makes any sense, right? Just keeping it real. I don't push the stuff on you. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, advertising what I do, which I do sometimes. You'll see at the end of some of my videos where I say, hey, I'll offer one-on-one -on -one financial coaching because I want to make sure you guys know that's available. And you have to pay for that, right? I do have some digital products. If you go to smartmoneybro.com, you'll see there's a tab that says shop. I have some digital products, right? Uh, products about how to buy good used car, ca cars cash. Products about how to... Um, uh, start an eBay business. I made six figures on eBay, right? I have some of those things available. I have a couple of books on Amazon, but I don't have, I don't, I don't have to push it so much, right? There's nothing wrong with letting you guys know every now and then about what I sell, but I don't have a course. I'm not, I don't have nothing to really, I can't say I don't have nothing to sell you. I have a few things to sell you, but I don't really push the, those things. I don't make a living off of what I sell you, right? I don't push the, the weekend boot camps. There's nothing wrong if you give a weekend boot, boot camp. But I would never, let me just say this, right? I would never charge you three or four or $5,000 for anything, 
right? I, I just I just wouldn't do it. Now, there's some people that do it. That's fine. You want to spend a weekend with them. You get to pay $10,000 and hang out on their jet. All that's cool. That's not me. That's not what I do on this channel. My thing is to share information. Share information and help people. And if I help enough people get what they want, the old adage is I get what I want ultimately, right? But I have a free ebook in the description box below. Um, I have some partners that I talk about. Uh, what is it? Uh, um, StreamYard and uh, Mint Mobile, right? But I only, you would, you guys, when you get followers on YouTube, you have an e if you have a, if you let your email address out there there's so many people that contact you on a daily basis who want you to do business with them right i get at least 10 to 15 emails a day of people wanting to partner with me to sell something on my youtube channel 95% of them i don't pay attention to right you know nike carhartt uh, you name it, right? Dickies, all I could keep, I could run down the list of all the companies you probably heard of that want me to do business with them, right? And I don't really do business with very many. So if I mention Mint Mobile, that's because I use Mint Mobile. If I mention ConvertKit, it's because I use ConvertKit. If I mention StreamYard, it's because I use StreamYard, right? I partner with them because I know them and I use them, but I get a lot of possibilities for brand partnerships, right? But the kicker is this, guys. The kicker is this. I don't want people spending tons and tons of money just to get the information and knowledge that I have. I'm not saying that that's bad if people do that. I just don't do it, right? I don't need people's money because I have a job. So if you want to partner with me and say, I need a one-on-one, -on -one. I want you to help me with, I'm, I'm definitely okay with that. You can check that out in the description box below. I'm okay with that, right? But there's some people for two years on this channel, two and a half years, I gave away free 15 minute phone calls with me free. You could have a 15 minute phone call with me for nothing. And I did hundreds of those to help people out nowadays because my time is more limited. If you want to join this channel, you can join the channel and you can pay, you know, twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents. And I'll get on the phone and talk to you for 20 or 30 minutes once a month. I'll do that. And I have a number of people that I do that with. That's 24, that's 25 bucks, right? To, to give you some personal one-on-one -on -one advice, right? You Listen, you can't, the reason I, I don't charge very much is for that is because 15, 20 minutes, I'll help you out. Not a problem. Just join the channel at the advanced level, right? But that's, that's another thing that separates this. My assignment is to help you, right? My assignment, me personally, my assignment is not to make a living off helping you right now, right? It's just to help you. My purpose is to bring you information on how to make more money, how to invest more money, how to manage more money, how to grow more money, right? And you really, I got nearly 600 videos on this channel, 550, 600 videos. You don't have to really pay for that. If you watch all my videos, it's, it's pretty much a free education. Number three is this. I want to help people develop their own philosophy about money. Part of this channel that makes it unique is my goal is to not just to have you just follow ex every, everything I say, right? I want you to do what is right for you and do what is what works for you because personal finance is personal. But you got to make sure that what you do and the philosophy that you develop for yourself and your own money works, not a philosophy that just uh, supports bad behavior with money. But I want you to think about money and think about what you believe with money and develop your own core values with money. I do not need you to agree with me 100% on everything. No. Matter of fact, I don't want you to agree with me on everything I say because that tells me you're not thinking for yourself. And you should be thinking for yourself when you're trying to deal with your life and your money, right? Not just regurgitating or, or what I say. Take what I say. Take what you know, Les Brown, Tony Robbins, Dave Ramsey, Robert Kiyosaki, you name the guru or the person you listen to, Susie Orman, whatever it could be, you take all of it and you develop your core values, your philosophy with money that helps you build wealth. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have all the answers for your money, right? I don't. I have some right? I have some that will help you out, but you have to come up with your own personal philosophy about money, right? 
You can use my plan and what I did as a blueprint for you. Absolutely. But you've got to walk your own path with your own money. There's no requirement on this channel to agree with everything I say, because I'm going to say some things that you don't agree with. And that is OK. Listen, we can still respect each other. We can still like each other without us agreeing 100 percent on everything about money. It's just not necessary. Right. We, we need to have I like to have a more adult approach, a more mature approach to social media, a more mature approach to YouTube that says, listen, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grown man. You're a grown woman, grown man. Listen, you can choose to decide and think how you want to think. I'm just giving you the nuggets that help me. I'm giving you the nuggets from my perspective, right? I'm giving you the nuggets of information from the way things that have happened, that have helped me based on my experiences, my failures, my mistakes, the good things I've done with money, right? I'm just trying to explain to you guys what makes this YouTube channel different than every other money YouTube channel that you've ever had, right? Smart girl in New York City said uh, Mint Mobile is legit. Yeah, they are legit. I had to find out if they were legit before I partnered with them because I didn't want to give out bad information. Absolutely, right? So just keeping it real, guys, just keeping it real. Uh, somebody said, Kimmy said, you talk about seeing your household finances as your first business. That was the catalyst for the my, my mind shift. I'm so grateful to you, Smart Money Bureau. Thank you, Kimmy. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Kimmy. And thank you for supporting this channel. I got a special show for you, perhaps tomorrow. And tomorrow is Easter, but so happy Easter weekend to you guys. But I got a special show tomorrow, guys. Uh, something I want to share with you, so, so be looking out for that. Number four. Let's go to number four because I don't want to take up all of your Saturday, but I just want you to kind of understand the difference between this YouTube channel that talks about money and you name it, Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, whoever they are out there, right? Listen, number four is this. On this channel, I want you to develop a firm foundation with your money right? And with your money management, I want you to have a firm foundation with money, right? I, the, one of the main things I push on this channel to help you out is money management, right? Because management is the key and management of money is something that a lot of people on YouTube really don't talk about because it's not glamorous. It doesn't get you clicks. It doesn't get you likes. It doesn't get you all that YouTube pushes entertainment. They don't push education about money so much, right? And people, of course, they push what you watch. And so people tend to watch entertainment quite a bit. So that's one of the reasons the algorithm pushes it, right? But I push management of money. How you think, your, listen, the foundation, your mind, how you think about money, making sure you have some emergency money that's there for you, um, taking care of your debt, especially debt on things that's going down in value. How do you behave with money? Your budget, doing a monthly budget, right? You notice I don't talk a whole lot on this channel about credit score, right? I'm not the credit score guru, right? For me, this, this is my philosophy. Again, you may not agree with this. I haven't, listen, I, I use credit to buy real estate because real estate goes up in value. I don't use credit to buy cars. I don't use credit to to buy gas for my for my car. I don't use credit to buy clothes. I don't use credit for any of that. So I don't talk about a lot of credit. I try to talk about on this channel the things that I do. And I don't use credit unless it's on something going up in value. So you don't you I may have 3 videos out of almost 550 videos that are public. I may have 3 videos that talk about credit cards or credit. Right? Credit score, I don't even know my credit score. I haven't, I checked my credit score maybe twice in the last 12 years, 13 years. Once when I was about to, uh, when I refied my property, right, about eight years ago, nine years ago. But that's, I, I really don't check my credit score. I'm not a big credit score person, right? Because I care, this is what I preach on this, a preacher talk about on this channel is I talk about behavior. I care more about how you behave with money. Because if you behave properly with money, credit will take care of itself, right? If you know how, many people are out here trying to fix their credit, fix their credit. I want to fix my credit. I got to get my credit right, fix my credit. But they never address the behavior that underpins and underlies the credit. That's what, that's the foundation. Credit is here. 
Behavior is right here underneath. You have to fix the behavior. And then when you fix the behavior, the credit takes care of itself. Right. So I don't focus much on credit scores. What's my credit score? Let me help you get your credit score. The way I help you get your credit score together is by not even talking about credit score, by talking about how do you behave with money? Do you have integrity with money? Do you have character with money? Do you pay back what you're supposed to pay back? See, I want to talk about the behavior of integrity with your money. If you borrow something, you pay it back. The, 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 the character with your money. If you borrow something, you pay it back. Right. Not because it's going to help your credit, but because it's the right thing to do. And then the result of that, the end result, the outcome is going to be a higher credit score. Right. Whether you're 600, 650, 750, 850. Right. I, I, that doesn't really that's not a big deal to me. Right. I care more about the behavior. The only time credit really matters to me is if you're buying an asset that's going up in value. Home, rental home, commercial property, multifamily building. Other than that. Credit is not something I focus on. I focus on the foundation on this channel. Have insurance, life insurance, health insurance, dental insurance, have an estate plan set up for your family, right? A state plan, power of attorney, a health care directive, a will, right? Have your beneficiaries all together. You know, are you are you putting money towards the 401k at your job that's free money? They're giving you a match. These are these are the, the basic foundations that I talk about on this channel, right? It's not glamorous. I don't, this is not the glamorous channel that's going to tell you which stock to pick, right? But I say have a budget, have an emergency fund, build your skills up so you can have a higher value so you can make more money in the future. Develop the good habits that help you manage the money well, right? The foundation, what good is it to have beautiful windows, a, a wonderful uh, paint interior painting, Excellent light fixtures that are so beautiful, wonderful layout, beautiful carpet or hardwood floors. What difference is it to have all that if you're standing on a shaky ground, if the foundation of the house is horrible? So I'm trying to get you to have a strong foundation. I don't care that you have beautiful uh, uh, light fixtures or wonderful interior paint job. I need you to have a foundation. When you go to buy a rental house or a house, period, Nothing else matters in the house if the foundation is bad, guarantee you, right? After 20 plus years of doing real estate, buying real estate, managing real estate, and uh, renting real estate, whatever you call it, I know for a fact that nothing else matters on the entire house if the foundation is bad. Look, the location, yeah, that, that matters, right? But look, foundation is going to cost you $20,000. Foundation is going to cost you $40,000, $50,000. And anytime you got to move dirt, that costs you a whole bunch of money. When you're trying to build up, a, if you're looking at a, at a house, if I'm looking at a house to invest in, if that foundation is bad, I'm probably typically, I'm thinking really hard about going the other direction. Same thing with your money. If your foundation with your money is bad, everything else is going to, is going to go, is, is going to be horrible. It's not going to work. Right? Who cares if you have a, a million dollars invested in the stock market, but you got $2 million worth of debt. You really don't have a million dollars invested in the stock market if you have $2 million worth of debt. So, I mean, the foundation, that's what this channel focuses on big time is building that up, right? Now, don't forget, guys, hit the like button for me. Share the link to this video. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Let's see here. Uh, okay, no cues in the chat. I'd like to go through the chat real quick, see if I got a cue. If you got a cue, oh, got a question. Okay, somebody said, uh, can you talk about wage now and early rate wage access? People are getting their income quicker than normal paychecks and getting in trouble. I don't see YouTubers talking about it. That's a good one. Let me write that one down. Wage now. I might do a video about that. Or I might talk about it. I won't hit it on this one right here because I want to do a little I want to do a little research on it before I actually have a, a full blown, a full blown video about it. But wage now. Just wrote it down for you. So thanks. Good, good, good question. I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. Uh, let's see here. Any other cues, questions? So grateful to have found your channel. Maddie, I'm glad to have you here as well. Credit scars are unpredictable. Somebody said old school, old school teaching. Well said. Yeah, old school. I'm a pretty old school guy, right? Known unknown, debt free by June. Congratulations to you on that. Um, let's see. Somebody said how to purchase real estate without a credit score. Um, depending on the depending on the lending institution you go through, right? 
there's some ways you can do some different type of underwriting um, that you could actually purchase some real estate without having a credit score necessarily. Um, always good to make sure you have a good portfolio if you don't have a credit score. Maria, how you doing? Let's keep going. Number five. On this channel, guys, we talk about flipping money, okay? Nothing fancy, not, not anything you know illegal, right? But flipping money because we talk about how to make money, make more money. We talk about the purpose of money is to make more money and that money is a currency, right? Understanding money on a different level. Money is supposed to flow. So we take the depreciating asset of money. We talk about this a lot, the depreciating asset of money, and we flip it into appreciating assets, stocks, real estates. Uh, real estate, index funds, ETFs, even if it's bonds, doesn't matter, apartment complexes, whatever it may be. But we don't want to just have money sitting idle, right? We don't want to have money sitting idle. Money is called a currency because it's supposed to move and flow just like water moves and flows, right? Think about when you see water flowing through a mountainside. What is it doing? It's flowing and the flow allows it to pick up, pick up and pick up things and erode and take away and pick up the... Money is supposed to supposed to flow. So we talk a lot about taking the money here and flipping it here immediately, immediately, not waiting two years to keep the money under your mattress because you lose money based on inflation. So we don't want to do that. We want to take the money immediately and move it to a, a asset class that's going up in value, right? Not taking the money and immediately taking a piece of money and moving it to an asset class that's going down in value. That kills money. We don't want to kill money. We want to keep money alive. How do we keep it alive? We take this money and we move it to something going up in value as opposed to something that's going down in value. So we don't we don't go buy cars with we don't have car payments, right? Because cars typically 99% of the time unless you're buying some muscle car 1969 Ford Mustang, right? Otherwise or you know, 1933 T model, Ford T model, whatever. Most times cars go down in value. Clothes go down in value, right? Shoes go down in value. I'm not saying you you got to have some of those things in order to you know to walk around in, in society, right? So, but I'm talking about for the most part, you're taking this money and you're flipping it over to something going up in value, right? This is how you build wealth. If you take your thousand dollars and you go buy a pair of Jordans, not saying this, let's say let's say a pair of let's say you go buy a suit for with your thousand dollars, it's the suit is going to be worth two hundred dollars next week. Because it's a used suit. But if you take the $1,000 and you go put it in a stock, uh, S&P 500 index fund, it's going to be worth, you know, $1,200 next next year. $1,200 next year. $1,100 next year. Because it's going to go up in value. So that that's, that's a big piece of wealth building that I think it's a very simple piece, but it's something that goes over a lot of people's head. We don't think about it, right? Number six, the sixth thing that makes this YouTube channel different is on this channel, I don't really push individual stocks, right? I don't like individual stocks. I don't really like individual stocks, okay? I don't like individual stocks for the average investor like we are. We I like to focus on index funds, ETFs, right? I don't focus on, hey, let me give you the best big, you know, Nvidia's killing the game right now. Let me go out, let me go out and buy some shares. There's nothing at all wrong with that if that's what you choose to do. I'm totally 100% good with that. It's just not something I do on this channel. We don't talk too much about, we talk about stock the stock market, right? Listen, I'm not that smart to be out there picking winners. I'm not. And most of us aren't that smart to be out there picking winners. We aren't geniuses. We're regular investors. We Listen, I don't want to spend time reading 10 Qs and 10, and 10 Ks and reading profit loss analysis. I'm not trying to pick the big next stock on this channel. I'm not going to give you the big next stock pick. There are channels out there that will do that, right? I don't stock watch. I'd rather evaluate index funds and, and teach you guys how to evaluate ETFs than play the game of individual stock picket, picking, you know, watching the markets and the ticker symbols go up and down like a hawk, you know, with monitors up in front of me and checking it daily on my on my lunch breaks. No, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to do that, I'm cool because personal finance is personal. I just don't do it on this channel. We're we're in on this channel. I talk to a lot of people because I've you know taken polls with got you know thousands and thousands of you know different people that I've talked to. 
We on this channel are beginner to intermediate investors for the most part. Beginner to intermediate investors. W most people on the, that watch this channel are not seasoned, been investing for 30 years. Now, if you have, cool, because you can always keep your learning fresh, right? If you know all this stuff. But most people that we deal with on this channel are beginner, beginner to intermediate investors. I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be an expert. I don't want to be an expert stock picker. Warren Buffett is the Michael Jordan of this game. I don't claim to be Warren Buffett, right? I respect him and other folks that play that game and play that game well. But if you look at studies, studies will tell you individual stock pickers don't do well, don't do as well as mutual funds and index funds or mutual, mutual funds and ETFs, right? Typically, right? Every now and then you get a great stock picker who's, you know, coming out, killing the game. But for the most part, 95, 99% of us, we ain't Michael Jordan. We ain't Warren Buffett. We, I don't even want to be Warren Buffett. Sure, I can read a profit loss statement. No problem. Look at some, uh, some, er some quarterly earnings reports from different companies. I can do that. I just don't want to do it. I prefer index funds and ETFs. So I have many videos on, on this channel that talk about how to evaluate index funds, how to evaluate ETFs, right? So that's who I talk to the people that want more information about that stuff, right? Let's see. G. Wiz asked a question. Put a Q up there. I appreciate you. He, uh, man, I'll do this. Let me do this. Let me show it up there. How about that? That's pretty neat, right? I just put it up. If you're not on YouTube, I just put it up on the, on the YouTube feed. I should be debt-free by this time next year. After that, would you aggressively invest in a Roth IRA or invest in business ideas? By the way, I already have a 401k and pension through my job. 31 years old. When you say aggressively invest towards a Roth IRA, you can there's a limitation on what you can put in the Roth IRA. So after you get out of debt, would I go ahead and suggest that you fully fund a Roth IRA? Absolutely. Absolutely. And consider in that Roth IRA having the money be invested in an S&P 500 index fund or ETF. Simple, right? Now, if you want to, I do suggest that you go above and beyond the max, the max for the Roth IRA if you can, right? But again, make sure your foundation is taken care of, right? What good is it to have $20,000 in a Roth or $6,000, $12,000, $18,000, $24,000 in a Roth IRA that's growing, that's growing, but you ain't even got $2,000 emergency fund, right? So in other words, build that foundation and do some of those foundational things before you dig into that, right? And you already have a, a 401k at your job and a pension. Fantastic. Gee whiz, you are doing some good things. So congratulations to you. I hope that answered your question. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. Okay. Number seven, on this channel, we keep this in mind. Money is one tool of wealth. Money is, is a currency, but money is not the only tool of wealth. Money is not even the most important tool of wealth. Yes, smart money bro said it. Money is not the most important tool of wealth. It's not. Money is important. We use money every day. We got to be good with managing our money. I get it, right? But here's the deal. There's other tools of wealth, right? Labor, reputation, skill, your skill set. Time is a big one, right? Relationships, right? You know, your network of people, right? Giving and helping. There's listen, your gift, your talent, right? What do you do well, right? Listen, uh, your followers on social media, your health. There's so many, so many different components of building wealth. It's not just about money and cash, right? Money, listen, information is a currency, right? Information is, is a big part of building wealth, right? Having information. Money is just a, is just one tool. It's not the most important tool, but you have to put money in its proper perspective in order to be good with money, right? When you understand that money is just one tool and one form of currency, then you begin to understand the possibilities that you can actually start to build wealth from zero. I bet you there's, there's, I bet you there's 15 people in this chat right now that started building wealth from nothing. And that you, so when people tell me this, you need money to make money. Not in the beginning, you really don't, right? Not in the beginning, you really do not need money to make money. 
You don't listen in the beginning. You need information. You need some belief. You need some 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 skills. You need a plan. You need more than just money to start to build money. Yes, we know that money compounds after a while. And as we said earlier, money makes money. We get that. But to get started, it's not just the money, right? You begin to gather new information. You begin to meet new people. You begin to build new relationships. You begin to offer and provide services to other people. You begin to work on your reputation. You begin to make sure you have good health. You begin to work on your skill set. You begin to work on your discipline. You begin to work on your commitment. This is how you start to build wealth. You don't start with money. Everybody don't have money. I just told you, I started at 30 years old with nothing. There's some people that started 15 with nothing, 20 at nothing, 50 with nothing. But you, all that's building wealth. But what happens is we get so focused on how do I make more money? How do I get more income? I, give me a side hustle. I got to make more money. Got to make more money. No, it's what else are you doing in your, in your life to be preparing yourself to build some wealth, right? That's what this channel is all about. This makes this YouTube channel unique. Not like other YouTube channels that talk about money, right? Somebody said, uh, just buy QQQ and SPY. QQQ was a good one. They follow the, 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 the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, right? Larry's in the house. Good to have you, Larry. Larry said, what is a Roth IRA? Larry, I want you to take, what is a Roth IRA? And I want you to Google it. It's just a savings mechanism for you to, it's, it's a retirement type of plan. It's a savings mechanism to invest and grow your money, right? It's a it's an investment vehicle called a Roth IRA. And I want you to Google that, Larry. But what is a Roth IRA? It's an investment vehicle to help you and grow your money and prepare for retirement down the road. That's what a Roth IRA. There's a traditional IRA and there's a Roth IRA. Sometimes you have a job where they offer a 401k and a Roth option to the 401k, right? Uh, who was the senator? Michael Roth from Delaware, 1985 or so when the Roth was created, 84, 85. All right. So somebody said, you, Maria said, your thoughts on annuities. I just moved to moved an old RA. To, I, I just moved a 401k to a future income annuity. I have no problem with annuities. Just make sure you read the fine print when it comes to um, annuities. All right. Very important to read the fine print. Um, annuities can be okay. If, if you, if you want the safety of an, an annuity and all that, that's fine, but you just got to make sure you read the fine print and understand the annuity. A lot of people get annuities and they don't really understand what is an annuity, right? What's going on? What's going, what's happening to my money? What type of payout? What's the penalties? What's the, you got to know all the specifics and particulars, Maria. All right. Let's see. Somebody said Dave Ramsey is right. 70% of the time. Uh, all right, let's jump back in. Oh, Known unknown. Let me give you a shout out for the super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate you more than you know. Look at you. I appreciate you. Question. Uh, um, I'm saving for my first rental property next year. Do I recommend an FHA or conventional and 3.5 or 20% and 3.5 or 20% and or 20% down? I will have Lord willing 60 to 80K into this year looking at duplex. Should I put it in my checking or savings? If you're storing up money, put it in a high yield savings account. Go ahead and let it get four or five percent interest over the next six months, a year, year and a half, two years. If you're storing up money, go ahead and throw it into a high yield savings account. Do your research, find one. They're usually going to be online. Plug your money into that. In terms of 3.5% or 20% down, 3.5% or 20% down, listen. The more you walk into a property, more equity, equity you walk into a property, really, the more you hedge against the risk of ever being upside down on the property, right? So if you buy a $300,000 uh, uh, duplex and you put $60,000 down, which is 20%, now you finance $240,000, financing $240,000 for that duplex, you know that if the market goes crazy, right? Or the market, you know, the the uh, the real estate market goes crazy. Properties, you know, go down. You're you're still okay. You still could sell that property any given moment at a at a profit if you put twenty percent down, right? I like the idea of putting 
20% down. I'm going to let you decide between FHA and conventional, but I do like the idea if you can. Ha now, here's the deal. When you buy a piece of rental property, never spend all your money on the down payment, right? You need to make sure you have down payment money and you have just in case money. I always say that fit by around four to $5,000 per door, about $5,000 per door is always good. If you buy a duplex, known unknown, if you buy a duplex, please make sure that when you buy that duplex, that you have about 10 grand sitting to the side for emergencies, right? When you listen, a lot of times what ha happens with people is they spend all their money on a rental property. And then when when they need a new HVAC, right, heating, heating, ventilation and cooling, they need a new cooling system or heating system. They don't have the money or they need to get new gutters. They don't have the money or they need to do some landscaping around the property. They don't have the money. So you got to make sure you have a little bit of money. And I mean, have money for a down payment and have money. That means you got to put 15 percent down. And still face the PMI. Or you could just wait another six months before you buy the property to make sure you have 20% down plus money to the side in case something goes wrong when you buy that property. You may have to wait a little bit longer, but you want to buy properties right. And here's the other thing. Let me tell you this, no, no, no. I don't want you to forget this when you buy a piece of rental property. Really important. You need to buy a deal. Don't You're, you're, you're an investor, right? Investors try to buy things low. You don't if the if the if the retail price for the duplex is three hundred thousand dollars, you don't want to pay three hundred thousand dollars. You want to pay two twenty. You want to pay two hundred. You want to pay two thirty one ninety because you're trying to buy a deal. You are not trying. You're trying to buy at prices where you can walk in there and still have equity in the property. That was a long answer. I hope I helped you out. Known unknown. Good question, though. Great question. Let's go to number eight. Number eight is this. The eighth thing that makes this YouTube money channel different is this. I don't buy, I, listen, I said it earlier. I'm going to dig into it here. I don't borrow money on things going down in value. I don't push debt on this channel, right? Matter of fact, I push against debt unless it's on a piece of real estate or something that's going up on up in value, right? I push, how do you get out of debt? How do you leave debt? How do you live without debt, Right? You don't listen. There's a notion out here that you have to live in debt to be successful with money. You really don't. I'm not talking about the billionaires, right? We I don't talk about the billionaires on this channel because that's out of my stratosphere. I'm not going to teach you how to be a billionaire, but I'm going to teach you how to be a really, really solid, good multimillionaire, right? And I push no debt. I only use debt to make more money. That means I only use debt to buy things that's going up in value. I look again, I'm looking at debt as a tool to make more money. I use, I'm sorry, looking at money as a tool to make more money, right? Uh, so I don't borrow on things that's going down in value. I don't want to lose twice, right? I don't want to go borrow money on a car because I don't want to have to owe a payment on a car, right? And then have to pay interest, right? And then it's also going down in value. I mean, I'm, I'm just killing the whole process of building wealth when I do that, right? It's when you when you when you have debt on something going down in value and you have to make payments on it, it you're, de you're destroying your ability to build your net worth. So I want you to go to college debt free. I want you to buy cars debt free. I want you to purchase appliances debt free. Now, if you really, really, really want to hold on to one credit card, I'm not going to beat you up or bash you for that. Nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do and you make sure you pay it off because you want to build a little credit. Whatever. That's fine. I'm not, a, I'm not totally against that, right? I don't do it, but I'm not telling you that it's horrible to do because everybody's a little different, right? But I haven't borrowed any money since about 2011, and I haven't used a credit card since about 2011, 2012, right? It's been a long time, right? And I'm going to also on this video, on this YouTube channel, I'm going to say, hey, get a 15-year mortgage on a house instead of a 30-year, right? 30 years is cool. Nothing wrong with it. If you want to do it, I'm not going to bash or beat you up for that either. But I like a 15-year mortgage because I want to pay it off, <laughs> right? Even though it's going up in value and you may say, wow, well, you don't want to get that lower rate. I mean, you don't, if you get a 2% rate and you can get 4 four, five, or 6% in your money in the stock market, you don't want to get that. Maybe not because I don't maybe want the risk of trying to, my point is this, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat, right? 
A lot of different ways you can think about things, but I'm okay with a 15-year note because everybody doesn't want to have mortgage debt for 30 years. Even though they can be getting a higher return, maybe somewhere else, you know, in the market, stock market with their money, everybody doesn't want to have debt for 30 years. That's cool if you don't, right? But I believe in these behaviors with money and the fact of not borrowing money and teaching people how to get out of debt. Because for a lot of people, debt is not just about the numbers. Debt is about the feeling of being tied, the feeling of being in bondage, the feeling of being an indentured servant for however long you have that debt, right? You have a 30-year mortgage. You are an indentured servant for 30 years. you got to pay that off or sell it or do something with it. But you it feels like indentured servitude when you have a 72-month payment on a car. What is 72 months? That's six years. You have six years of $500 a month that you have to pay and you have to work to pay it off. That feels like indentured servitude for a lot of people, right? So I push getting out of debt on this channel. That is another thing that makes this YouTube channel different. Guys, smash the like button for me. Let me know that you hear me. Smash the like button for me, guys. Number nine is this. Oh, let's see here. Known unknown, man. Dropping another super chat. I appreciate you more than you know. It says, we'll plan to consult you end of this year. Once I have money accumulated, do you recommend duplex, triplex? I live in the Maryland, D.C. area. Debt-free in June. Debt-free in June. Fantastic. Known unknown. Please reach out to me when you do your debt, when you have your debt-free scream and you're ready to go debt-free. debt, debt free. Let me know that, too. 700-plus credit. Currently plan on having a 727.40. Congratulations to you on great money decisions. Yes, feel free to reach out to me uh, whenever you're ready, right? You can join this channel at the advanced level and pay the small fee, and we can have 15, 20, 25-minute conversations leading up to you uh, getting, out of, getting out of debt or leading up to you actually accumulating your money. So, yeah, I'm here for you. Appreciate you sharing. I appreciate that uh, super chat. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. Peter said discipline. Absolutely. I'm going to get to the next one in just a moment. Question. Let's say I have 20, put 20K into a Roth IRA that's accumulating over some years. Yay, good for you. Can I withdraw that 20K whenever I want? There's a five-year rule when it comes to a Roth IRA, right? You can, in the first five years, you can touch, first of all, Roth IRA, you can't touch it before you're 59 and a half unless you want to pay a penalty, right? 59 and a half, you pay a penalty. But there's also a five-year rule that you can't, you gotta, gotta, you can't touch, only, you can only touch what you put in in the first five years, you can't touch your growth. I think I'm saying that right, right? You can't touch your growth, but you can always touch the money that you put in your contribution because you put that in tax free as a Roth IRA. I hope that helped you out. Let's see. You cannot legally get an FHO properly. Let's see. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, I think that is a good point. Exenio. You got to, you got, yes, FHA, you got to think about. Uh, in terms of, and this that's one of the reasons I said I'm going to let you decide on that because some people still try to go out and get FHA with rental properties. Thanks for bringing that out again, uh, Exenio. Let's see here. HVAC was 13,000 in Vegas in the summer, 120 degrees. Yeah, 13K. I think I could be wrong. I said 10K, or I might have said 10K earlier. HVACs can be more expensive than that. That's for sure. Uh, somebody said debt is in, uh, depressing. I agree. I'm a fan. I'm a fan, and I believe that to be true as well. Let's see here. Number nine, ninth thing that makes this YouTube channel different, separates us, is we push the core belief that money is your responsibility on this channel. We push that, yes, there's other things that's going to affect you. I get it. Outside things, inflation, you name it. But money is the responsibility of the person in the mirror. We talk about the Federal Reserve on this channel. We talk about their move with the Fed funds rate and interest rates. But on this channel, we don't blame anybody but the person in the mirror, right? Because that is our strength. The blame is our strength and the blame is our strength, right? The blame is our strength and the blame is our strength. Listen, you, you need to be empowered with your money in order to change your money situation. You always have to be empowered with your money, right? You can't be empowered with your money and blaming other people for your money problems at the same time. It doesn't work like that. You have to take responsibility for your money and for your money situation. I need you to look in the mirror. That's the key. That's the problem with your money, and that's the solution to your money, all wrapped up in the into the person in the mirror. So the money that your money is about your behaviors. Your outcomes with money is about your behaviors with money, right? It's completely up to you. It's not the government. 
It's not the president. It's not the Congress. It's not your mayor. It's not foreign policy. It's not military spending. It's not any of that. It's not your, it's not even, it's, listen, it's not even really predicated on your background. Remember, money, how you handle money moving forward is what makes the most, uh, is, is what's the most important. We all have made mistakes with money. We all have grown up thinking about a certain way with money. We all have a certain built-in psychology about money based on how we grew up, what we were taught, experiences that we remember and don't remember in our subconscious about money. We all have that baked into us. But what happens to money moving forward is based on the decisions and choices that you decide to make. That's a large part of the philosophy of this YouTube channel. All those things may affect you, how you grew up with money, how you didn't grow up with money, how you, you know, the inflation and all the, they all can have an indirect effect. I get it. But the most important thing is what you decide to do today. The person in the mirror is the most responsible for where you are and where you're going to be with money, right? Because I believe that we all have opportunities in life, right? We live in America. Some of you may live in UK, Brazil, wherever it may be, but we all have opportunities. And the government is not the end, be, say all, be all to where you go with your money. Now, I'm talking about free nations. I'm not talking about communist countries and things like that, right? I'm talking about countries where you actually have the right to do some things that you want to do with your own money. Again, we all have problems. We all have a past. We've all had issues and made mistakes, right? But listen, we all start from different places in life. Some start here. I started here. Some start here financially, right? Some start way up here, right? But even the person up here, if they make the wrong choices, they'll end up down here. Because choices and decisions is what's going to make or break you with your money. I had to start building my wealth where I was, not complain about where I was. I had to start with where I was. I had to learn to play the hand that I was given, right? Everybody has to learn to play the hand that they're given in life. We don't all start with the same stuff, the same place, right? The key is... How, how, how are you, what are you, what have you learned? What have you learned? Right? The first place to go to blame anybody about your money is the person in the mirror. You, that's, that's your superpower. Personal responsibility is your superpower. Right? Because it gives you the power to change, the power to make other decisions, the power to choose. Right? Right? When you think like that, you become incredibly powerful with your money and it gives you life changing control over your personal finances. That's the whole point of it. Right. That's the whole point of it. Let's see here. I'm just going to go back to the chat real quick. I'm going to number 10. Let's go to number 10 on this channel. I emphasize this guy's big piece of the channel. And this is what makes the channel different. The, talk, the, the money talk here different. I emphasize helping other people at the end of every single video. I'll do it at the end of this video. I tell you to take care of yourself, but help take care of other people. I believe in giving and helping. I believe that brings good. I believe in bringing good to the world with my money, with money, right? The people who need it the most should get the most help, right? Just because I believe in personal responsibility doesn't mean that I don't believe in helping people who need help. Give, give, and give, right? I don't care if it's tithing to a church that you believe in or if you, you give to help other people. Maybe you give to the homeless, you feed, whatever you do, but give, right? All the, listen, all the way to seven figures, I tithed and I gave to I help people out along the way with money, helped them right? $5, $10, $20. Hey, I got three pair of gloves here. Let me hand out some gloves, whatever. It's just helping other people. It's a principle. If you know this channel, guys, most of what I talk about on this channel are just principles. The problem is, is that these principles are difficult for a lot of people to do, right? 
because we don't have the discipline to do these principles. Everything that this channel is about that makes it different is the fact that we're talking about principles. Principles. Take care of your four walls first and then take care of other people, right? If you have the means, then you're blessed and you should be grateful and you should give and help other people, right? Take care of yourself and take care of other people. That's a big part of the philosophy of this channel. Since 2001, I've been given. I learned to give after I was 30 years old and giving along the way, giving thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars along every single year, even when, you know, my income was $35,000 a year, $40,000 a year, I was given, right? If you look at my budget today, I tell you guys, when we talk about budget, at the top of the budget is giving. It's part of the philosophy of this channel. You know, maybe it sounds cheesy, sounds corny to some of you guys, but it's helped me. And again, my job is to turn over to you the things that have helped me, right? Number 11, we push being different with money on this channel. When the crowd goes left, I'm telling you, think about go right, right? Never, never, never just follow the crowd when it comes to money. You have to make your own decisions with money, not the decisions that you're told to make. You know how they tell you what to think on your favorite news station or on your favorite social media platform? I don't care if it's Twitter, X, Facebook, Instagram, Fox News, CNN, whatever it is you watch. They tend to tell you what to think and tell, and sort of sort of give you an idea of how to think. My goal is to teach is to give you guys, teach you guys and help you guys understand how to think for yourself when it comes to money. Right. Every piece of money and financial information, even what I'm telling you now, needs to be put through the filter of you. Your questions, your skepticism, your doubt, your scrutiny, deep thought. That way you just don't take what I say and regurgitate it. You put it through your own mind. See, it, nowadays, guys, we don't think very much. We, we really don't. We're, we're not a society of big thinkers, right? We're more of a, a society of just uh, doers and kind of like uh, sheepish or is it sheepish or sheep sheepish or goat-like mentality. We're herd-like, herd-like thinking, right? We see people doing this. Oh, let me do this. We see people buying that stock. Let me buy that stock. We see people doing, what is this right here? Let me do this, right? We sort of don't stop and think and run things through the filter of good, solid, common sense on a regular basis, right? This is why this channel says, you don't have to agree with me. Go out and do your own research. We all need to be reading and gathering information and forming our own philosophy about money and letting that philosophy guide our good decisions about money, right? The goal should always be, in my opinion, guys, especially when it comes to money, because people are very emotional with money. Money is a very rational thing. But most people, a lot of people are very emotional with money. They spend money emotionally. I, you know, I, I'm feeling down. So let me go do some. Let me go look at some clothes. Let me go. I feel this way. You know, my emotions are up and down. So my money is up and down. Right. But, you know, in my opinion, we talk about living well below your means thinking about money in a very rational way, not making emotional decisions about money, right? And being a little bit different with our personal finances, right? I learned a long time ago, guys, that <clears throat> I couldn't really think and be like everybody else with my money if I wanted something different than everybody else with my money. That helps shape my, my money philosophy. And that's what we talk about on this channel. The 12th thing we talk about is we do not believe in getting rich quick. Does it happen? Sure, it happens. But I'm not into the get rich quick culture, the get rich quick fast. I'm, I'm a guy who started life extremely poor, and I understand and believe that money takes consistency over time. Less bling bling and more discipline. Less bling bling and more calculated right decisions with money. Right? And my focused audience is regular people just like me. It's not about the bling bling, the jewelry, the fancy this, the fancy that. No, 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 no. People that sell you get rich quick mentality, run from them. Run from the people that tell you you can get rich quick, right? Even if, listen, I don't care if it's YouTube, I don't care what social media platform you own, you're on, be careful. Because people that are looking for get rich quick schemes are tip, or not looking, but people that are, are, are susceptible 
to get rich quick stuff, right? They're the people that typically can get scammed by scammers, right? You got to be very careful, right? You have to have a strong, this is why you got to build up your foundation, have a strong core values with your money, strong philosophy with your money, and be careful about these gurus out here because they'll tell you how you can make $10,000 in a month. Can you make $10,000 in a month? Yes, you can, but you have to be leery. You have to ask questions. You have to turn the other direction. If it feels like a scam, leave it. In, on this channel, we believe that money takes time and it takes a process to build. They call it building wealth because you got to build it, right? It has to be built up. And then you have to be built up in the process of building the wealth, right? This is why you see a lot of people win the lottery and they go broke because they haven't become the people. They haven't built up themselves to be able to handle the wealth, right? Can you make money faster and, and build wealth quicker? Yes, you can. Absolutely. But it's called building wealth. Streamline. Listen, I'm a streamline the process and be efficient, be smart, but go through the process. Go through the actual process, right? You're going to get better in the process. You're going to get smarter, stronger, more intelligent, more disciplined, more committed if you actually go through the process of building wealth. Watch out for the scams. I don't offer you a scam. I don't offer you get rich quick. But I do offer you on this channel the ability to understand the process, start thinking differently, differently with money, start doing things differently with money, and start seeing different results and outcomes with money, right? That's what I offer. And, you know, I talk about side hustles on here where you can make money fast. And I say fast, but you can make money quicker. Let's put it like that, quicker. If you do a side gig, maybe you get into real estate, maybe you sell digital products, maybe you um, start an eBay or Amazon, Amazon store, right? All those things are open and they're a possibility for you. But still, there's a process, right? There's still a process to it, right? Number 13. Oh, just got two more of these guys, but let me check out the ch chat real quick. Let's see. Zach, if you get a duplex, triplex, fourplex, never have a shared garage. Yeah, that's a problem. Let's see here. Good points that that helped me out. Excellent. Thanks, Zach, for helping out uh, him in the, in the chat. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. You're helping people of all ages. Sunset on the ocean. Absolutely. I appreciate that sunset. Mrs. Moore. Hey, good to see you. Glad you're here. Thank you for the hand clap there. Uh, let's see. Mommy Trader's in the house. You guys check out her channel. Mommy Trader. She has a YouTube channel. Uh, feel free to check her out as well. Somebody says stay away from MLNs, right? Uh, somebody said most people who look rich aren't rich. Fancy homes, fancy cars, jewelry, clothes, and trips. Yeah, yeah. You can go broke trying to look rich, right? Many people, st uh, let's say, stay broke trying to look rich, right? Right? Already broke, but guess what? Oh, look at me. I'm on the beach. Okay. Yo, look at me. I got a fancy car. All right. Great stuff, right? I'm not against you. If you have great cars, fancy cars, bunch of jewelry, I'm not against you at all. I'm just saying this channel is not all about the bling bling. Absolutely. Number 13 is this. On this channel, we focus on money, <clears throat> but we don't worship money. Two separate things, right? Worshiping money and focusing on money, two separate things, right? Real sustainable wealth requires that you focus on it, right? You have to focus on the money right? It's nothing wrong with focusing on money, right? Paying attention, being intentional with money. Having, listen, what you focus on tends to grow. That's why I tell everybody, you need to be doing a net worth statement on a spreadsheet or on paper. You need to figure out, be figuring, be figuring out on a regular basis, twice a year, three times a year, four times a year, what is your net worth? When you focus on it, it will grow, right? When you focus on your net worth, because you're going to be focused on bringing down your liabilities, focusing on increasing your assets, your net worth is going to grow. Focus on money. Nothing wrong at all with focusing on money. But as I said earlier, money is only one tool. Don't put money on a pedestal. We don't worship money on this channel, right? We do not do anything to go out and get money on this channel. We don't sell our soul for money on this channel. We don't sell our values and our character for money. And we don't sell out our family, our people. We don't, we don't sell our culture, whatever you may call it. I don't care what it is. You call it whatever you want to call it. We don't sell anything out, our dignity, our self-respect for dollars. It ain't that serious. Money is important. 
Money is important, but we don't put money on too high of a pedestal, right? Listen, I guarantee you, if you put money on too high of a pedestal, you'll end up finding yourself doing things for money that you would not otherwise do. And you'll look up and you'll be doing these things that you don't want to do just to make money, just to get money, right? Because you're worshiping money. You're, you're giving money too much, too much credit. It's important. It's a tool. It's not the most important tool and you push, should not worship it. Right. Again, that's a principle. Right. It's just a principle. Focusing on money, worshiping money, two separate things. I want you to focus on it. Please don't worship it. Right. Focusing on money looks like this. You have goals. You have habits. You have some planning. You do some daily things on a regular basis to meet your goals. You do some reading about it and you understand it. You learn about it. Right. You actually work on the behaviors that's necessary to be good with it, right? You put it in its proper perspective as a tool of wealth, right? Again, you don't sacrifice. And we all make this, listen, we all are susceptible to this, right? Because even the person that's 45 years old watching this video that is at a job and the job is maybe, you know, you like the job, but you want this promotion. And what do you do to get this promotion? You do some things that you maybe should not do just to get this promotion. You do some things that may be a little unethical on the job, and you're not sure if they're the right thing to do, but you do them because you want to look good. And you want even these people, you have people that do that. You have to be careful about that, too. Right. But you don't want to sacrifice who you are for money. And you've got to get to a point in your life, guys, where you really that that becomes an internal part of who you are. It's easy for me to say that right now, but it is going to be harder for you if you're more reliant on certain things, right? But just keep in mind money's not the most important thing in the world. Somebody asked a question. They didn't put a cue, but that's okay, not a big deal. Uh Jerson, what do you think about CDs putting your money for 1 year? CDs are okay. They're very very low risk. I'm not a big fan of CDs. I own zero CDs. They tie up your money. They don't necessarily offer a good, solid return that I'd like to see, right? They don't offer the return that I'd like to see. So I'm not a CD investor. Some people like to ladder CDs and do these different things with CDs. If that's what you like, and that's based on your own risk tolerance, I'm not mad at you for that. I just want to get a better return on my money than a CD. And most CDs will offer, even if they're long, you know, 10, you know, long-term CDs, whatever you want to call them, right? Number 14 is this. This is the 14th thing that makes this YouTube channel different than other money YouTube channels. On this YouTube channel, I want you to keep money simple. Simple, simple, simple. I believe in the big three plus one. Some people might call it a big four. The big three plus one. This is what I believe in. On this channel, we talk a lot about it. Big business, I'm sorry, big business, business building, real estate, stock market investing, those three, right? Business building, so you can leverage the power of labor, the power of your own creativity, the power of your own decision making, the power of your own work ethic, business building, building a business right? Where you provide the world with something that you sell, something that you offer, a service or good, right? Building a business. Building a business has made more people financially free than almost anything else, except for maybe real estate. But business building is important. If you want to build a business, yes, yes, and yes. That's a great way to become financially free is building a business. It allows you to leverage all of your, your personal creativity, your personal uh, ability to work hard and long, and a personal ability to understand customers, for, to provide a, a worthy service or a worthy good to the marketplace. Excellent. Building a business. Real estate is number two, real estate. So you can reap the benefits of the appreciation and the risk that comes with investing in land, buildings. A property for for rent or rental properties, you know, commercial, whatever it may be, you get a chance to participate and reap those benefits 
through real estate. It's an asset that's going up in value, right? And then the, the third of the big three plus one is the stock market, right? Because the stock market, if you look at any five or 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 year track of the stock market, it's going up in value. It's another asset that typically over the long term rises in value. And again, what's this channel about? Investing in assets that go up in value, that appreciate. Now, the plus one, those are the big three, right? But the plus one is an investment in you. This channel is all about investing in you, your learning, your growth, and your skills. I did a video about two weeks ago with seven skills, seven jobs that will be in demand for the next 10 plus years that don't require an education or, or a, high, a college degree. Don't require a college degree. Why? Because you need to increase your value to the marketplace. How do you do that? You invest in you. You invest in your learning, invest in your growing, and invest in your skills. You can so you can take advantage. You know, we want you to take advantage of all the things that the stock market has to offer, you know, compound interest and all that stuff, investing in companies and you know, other, you know, the real estate and all that good stuff. But we what about yourself? How do you get better? How do you command a higher pay? You command it by coming to the table with that education, coming to the table with those skill sets, coming to the table with that trade, coming to this table with those certifications, right? On this channel, the big three plus one. I'm not going to talk on this channel about the, the rise in cryptocurrency, right? I probably won't spend a lot of time talking to that. I'm not a crypto guru. Know a little bit about crypto, right? Coinbase and all those, right? Uh, uh, what MBF, uh, uh, the Friedman just got con uh, sentenced last year, last week to 25 years in prison for his cryptocurrency uh, uh, theft, right? Thieving, right? But I'm not going to talk too much about cryptocurrency on this channel. I might, I may hit it a little bit, right? But I'm not going to talk too much about trading options right? Calls and puts. I'm not going to talk too much about that on this channel, at least not at this point. I'm not going to talk too much about tra Forex trading, commodities trading, right? Venture fund capitalists. I'm not going to talk too much about those things, guys. I may mention them here and there as they fall into context of what we're talking about. And those are all fine ways to make money. I'm not mad at you if you do. It's just not what I do. I like to talk about on this channel things that I have experienced and what I do so I can give you the real, genuine take on it right now. Don't get me wrong. As these things grow, if there's something big that happens with Forex or big that happens in the crypto space, I may have a conversation about it, but it's not going to be the basic foundation of this channel, right? That's part of the philosophy of this channel. That what my, my focus is what makes this channel unique guys right? It's these core values and principles that I talk about with money that makes this channel unique. Can you benefit at being 20 years old? Absolutely. If you watch this channel, right? But again, this channel really hits home for those grown folks who've made a few decisions with, with money and they want to be better with their money, right? Let's see here. Let me go back to the chat, guys. That's my 14 things that make this YouTube money channel different than other YouTube channels, right? Let's see. Somebody said, HYSAs are paying 4 to 5% interest just like CDs and your money is not tied up. True that. True that. Absolutely. And see, plus HYSAs is compounded on a monthly basis. Absolutely. Let me run back through here, see if I missed any questions, guys. If you have a question, put it in the chat. I'll answer it before we end this live, right? Let me know, guys, if you have a question. I don't mind answering it. I want to say this, too. Oh, I probably didn't say smash the like button. No, I said it way earlier. Make sure you hit the like button, guys, the thumbs up button for me. Make sure that you check out the description box below here on YouTube. I got some free stuff. You can check me out at smartmoneybro.com. You can check me out at smartmoneybro on any social media that you, uh, platform that you use. IG, I'm smartmoneybro. Facebook group and page, Smart Money Bro. If you go over to X, Smart Money Bro, right? So it, all, all those places, I'm there, right? If you're not a subscriber to this channel, please consider subscribing to my channel, right? I hope I was able to lay out a blueprint 
lay out the blueprint on this video of what this channel has to offer. What makes this channel different? Smart girl in NYC, appreciate you being here. Listen, what makes this channel different? What sets it apart? I think I'm going to do a, a video, and you guys let me know. I'm going to do a poll in the community tab and ask a few questions about video topics, but I want to do a, a video about starting a YouTube channel when you're older, right? I get a lot of questions and emails from people who are in their 40s, you know, and want to say, I want to start a channel in their 50s. I want to start a YouTube channel, right? I started this channel at the age of 51. So I'm going to do a video shortly and soon about how to start a YouTube channel as you age. Maybe you're not so much of a, of a millennial. Maybe you don't have, excuse me, maybe you don't have a great sense of the internet or a great feel for the technology that's necessary. And so, hey, if you want to start a YouTube channel, I'm going to be doing a live about that sometime soon. Also, tomorrow, I got a special live that's going to happen probably around 1 p.m. Um, and I know it's Easter, so happy pre-Easter day, but happy Easter weekend to all of you out there that celebrate Easter as well. So, but I'm going to be doing a special one tomorrow. Be looking for that, guys. Don't slip on that one. It'll give me, it'll be a wonderful live, guys. And I appreciate you coming back to the channel to check that out. If you're not on YouTube, guys, still drop a comment because I want to check out that comment and actually provide some information, provide some help. Usually, when I do a live, I try to go through the comment section and answer almost all the questions. Hey, we got another one. Somebody said from Larry, when do you have to begin withdrawing? from your 401k have to start withdrawing you got rmds right and let me let me just kind of and i might want to sh share this with you your, my screen with you all right but there's a have to right as you get older right minimum distributions right minimum distributions right we'll talk about that i think i'm going to do a whole video about that larry so i want you to hang on to that question about minimum distributions from retirement accounts, right? Um, so just just kind of put that in the back of your brains. Uh, Seventy, I think it was changed to seventy three or something like that this year. But I want to have a, I want to do a whole video about that one. Okay. Let's see here. Ohio said, "I'm going to answer one, one or two more questions." I always do that at the very end, right? Forty four years old, we'll be getting forty k from a settlement. Ohio Green. I have 45K in student loans that I'm paying off. I already have 3K emergency fund. What can I do to increase my money for the future? Ohio Green, you're 44 years old. You got 40K that's coming from a settlement. You owe 45K in student loans. Now, you only got 3K in your emergency fund. Here's what I would ask you to consider doing, Ohio Green. Let me put that on the screen so you guys can see it real quick. Okay. Here's what I would consider you thinking about doing Ohio Green. First of all, there's other variables that I don't know based on your question that might help me answer it better. But one thing I would think about doing is building up your emergency fund. 3K doesn't sound like it's at least three to six months of your emergency money. So I would say when you get this 40K, perhaps you need to boost up your emergency fund. I'm just trying to tell you how to do it right and build a strong foundation, right? I could tell you, hey, go put that $40,000 immediately into a stock or two stocks or the stock market. But what's the what's good about having $40,000 growing in the stock market, maybe growing, maybe not growing, having $40,000 in the stock market when you owe $45,000 in student loan debt? Do you really have 45 do you really have $40,000 to your name if you owe $45,000 of student loan debt? No, not really, right? So I would say, this is me, I would say you need to build up your emergency fund and get rid of your debt. And once you get rid of your $45,000 of student loan, now you have that $300 that you were paying on your student loan or that $500 you were paying. Now you can take that money and go build money. But I would say first, build your emergency fund and get out of that, get, out, get put, put as much towards that student loan debt as you can, as you, that you have left. Because I don't want you having a whole bunch of debt, right, on something that's not going up in value. Student loans ain't going up in value. So I would say get rid of that debt. That's what I would say, right? Now, with that said, I hope I was able to help you guys out on this video, this live. I hope I was able to offer you guys 
answer the question of what sets this YouTube channel at Smart Money Bro on YouTube apart from other money channels, other investing channels, other money management channels, right? I'm no guru. I made mistakes with money. My purpose is to help you be with, better with your money based on some of the mistakes that I made with money, right? So listen, again, I hope I was able to share something with you guys that helped you out. This is, for me, this has been 14 of the most important steps, or I won't say steps, most important pieces of core philosophy, core values that have helped me build my money over the last 20 plus years. Again, 30 years poor, 15 or so years stuck in the middle of the middle class, seven or eight, nine years, really understanding and building more wealth, really getting over the seven-figure uh, net worth plateau, right? These are core values and principles that have worked for me, right? And you can take them and form your own philosophy with money. That's the whole purpose of this channel. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Don't forget to check out Mint Mobile. It's legit. It's in the description box on YouTube. Get your free 24 Laws of Money free ebook in the description box on YouTube. And also, again, I do offer one-on-one -on -one financial mentoring and coaching because on this channel, I strongly realize and believe that personal finance is personal. Many of the things that we say across the board, sometimes everybody's situation is slightly different. And so everything, everything doesn't work for everybody, right? Totally understand that. Guys, again, as I always say, at the end of every video, the best person who's going to take care of the old you is the young you. Take good care of yourself and also take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.